Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the post-lunch business session. To the viewers online, welcome back. We begin business session two on HR strategies and best practices from industry peers. <coughs> May I now invite the distinguished speakers for this session to take their place on the dais. Mr. R. Venkat Narayanan, President, HR, Rane Group. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Mr. Venkat Narayanan. Welcome to you, sir. Our next speaker, Mr. K. Ganeshan, Vice President, HR, Tata Consultancy Services. Mr. R. Venkat Narayanan is the President, HR, with the Rane Group, as Group HR, uh, Head of HR, IT and Education, uh, he leads strategic initiatives in HR and IT to support long-term organizational capability building, leadership development, and innovation for business growth. He has extensive experience in HR, industrial relations, learning and development, organizational development, and change management in companies like Sale and Mascon Global. He graduated from the University of Madras and did his postgraduate from the Calcutta University. An alumnus of the Royal Institute of Public Administration, London. He has also undergone the Business Leaders Program at IAM Calcutta. He has many recognized certifications to his credit. He is associated with the professional forums such as CII, NHRD, SHRM, EFSI, and IS, ISTD. A very warm welcome to you, sir, Mr. Venkat Narayanan. We also have with us Mr. K. Ganeshan, Vice President, Human Resources, TCS. Mr. K. Ganeshan. Uh, is currently the Global Head of Talent Acquisition and Academic Interface Program, uh, which he took over in 2008. He has HR experience and has a right blend of industrial relations and organizational development. He has over 20 years of uh, experience in TCS and has handled a wide variety of roles and responsibilities, including recruitment, performance management, and was, and was also the head of the Human Resource Allocation Section of TCS in Chennai. Mr. Ganeshan has played a very significant role in taking care of the HR part of merger and integration of some of TCS subsidiaries, besides heading the learning and development wing of TCS. He's, a board, he's in the board of studies of many engineering colleges and management institutions. Ladies and gentlemen, each speaker will be speaking for about 20 minutes, and then we will have the interactive session. Over to the first speaker, Mr. Uh, Venkat Narayan from Rani. Thank you, Prakash. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Are we all awake? I, 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 I heard and I was happy to hear that Ganesh had given some suggestions on what we should eat and what we should not eat during lunch. And thanks, Ganesh, even if he's not here. It's certainly a very difficult session. And uh, a tongue-in-cheek comment in the afternoon sessions, they say that uh, this is a time when uh, if a gentleman speaks, and if you hear what you like, you look. And if a lady speaks, if you like what you look, then you hear. So, <laughs> I think I, I perhaps have the disadvantage of <laughs> having... <laughs> that was a tongue-in-cheek comment. I have no intentions to hurt anyone. Uh, <coughs> in fact, um, there's another conclave uh, group captain, Jai Kumar, was kind enough to give this opportunity to us. And he had a word with me and... Uh, Around the time, there are several conclaves which are uh, being held in the country in Chennai simultaneously. And I thought some of us have what is called as, suffer from what is called as a conclave fatigue. You know? And when we bump into many people, we say, yeah, we met in that CII conclave or NHRD at Hyderabad, that C, you know, uh, SHRM at uh, Bangalore, etc., etc. I always wonder whether HR is one of those areas where uh, you need a lot of um, conclaving to, to network and uh, and share knowledge, um, you know, etc. So, yet another conclave is most welcome at this juncture because it gives us an opportunity to network. And uh, when it, the the topic, I believe, has been carefully chosen to revolve around strategy and uh, in strategy, particularly best practices. And uh, that is again a very iffy thing about this best practices because, I mean, I've always believed that these are some practices which cannot be, which are not cut-pastable, you know, which can't be transferred to another organization and expect 
the practice to deliver same kinds of results. So several times we need to make sure that what works elsewhere works in our situation also. So, um, like in one of our business is a process oriented business. Um, so, which uh, we had a session for the workman, and that was, um, I think my friend Kumar is here, he used to be head of HR of that business at some point in time. And they compared the process to making idli dosa. Now, apparently, the formula in terms of how much rice and how much uh, some varieties of dal, other ingredients are to be soaked and ground and made is templatable, but it tastes very different from home to home, you know. <laughs> no two dosas made in no two places are same. They taste the same. And perhaps the nutrient value could be the same, but the taste, look and feel is very different. So our practices are uh, something which is very unique again, each organization's practice. So the idea is there could be certainly some learning out of this. So what I've done is I put together certain uh, content which I had, an assorted mix of some kind of setting the context and uh, some bit of exposure to our practices and maybe during Q&A we will uh, take up. Yeah, I operate from here? Yes, sir, you can do it. Do, do this? Yeah? One minute. Okay. Yeah, that's okay, it works. I must acknowledge the help of uh, a few young colleagues of mine who had put together a presentation for me after discussions and what we had, it was rehashed. And they said that, um, you know, one of the indicators for uh, best practice, it's not moving forward. Yeah. It takes a little time. Okay. One of the best practices is what it would look like from, from the young gen, which is, I think, which makes up for more than two-thirds of the country's population and even our own uh, median age is about 33, which is, uh, you know, fairly significantly low for a manufacturing company that I come from in the sense that it became 33 from 40 in about five to six years. So they said that, look, at the end of the day, there should be a look and feel, which is something like this. So which is why HR strategies and also in the context of a lot of diversity, changing needs in terms of what I want, what you want, what, what everybody wants, what they want. You know, there's, there's a lot of this uh, conflicts which, which keep happening. And so therefore, it's, it's very puzzling. And uh, so, so many models and so many theories have come around to, to, work, to work on, to educate us, to experiment on engagement attraction, retention, motivation, development, etc., etc. I'm sure we will, you may have heard about it in the morning, we might hear more about it in the next session on social media. This is a time when we have several generations working together. The last one, millennial, talks about BYOD. I think bring your own device. The first generation never had a device. For example, when I started my career several years ago in a steel plant, there was no device to take home. Today, people come in with a couple of devices even before they walk into the office for the first job. So, you know, it's, uh, it's such is the gap. And very rightly, a friend of mine asked me during, this, uh, during today's lunch break, uh, what, how do you manage this kind of uh, generational diversities at, uh, at workplace? So this is a very unique kind of a situation in, in every organization and more so in our context that we have several generations working together. So what do they want? Diversity. I'm sure some of you may have had an opportunity to have been part of some of such specific discussions. And we did some crowdsourcing. It's not that I'm referring to any particular study or any particular uh, source, including our own internal discussion. What is the view of life of uh, uh, a veteran or a boomer or a Gen X or a Gen Y? And uh, certainly there is vast difference if you see uh, in terms of, um, let's say, uh, technology, which is very important. There was somebody who at some point in time felt that they would outlive or they would master it. But today is the time when people are going to employ it. So they want to make life easier and bring about more work-life balance. Though you appear to be always working because anytime, wherever you are, you seem to be in front of some screen or the other. 
and, and the screen that's always accessible to you is your, is your smartphone, your smartphone screen. So you don't know whether it is work or fun or life or balance, but but it, it, it's, it's come to be like that. And uh, um, imagine several times you find that uh, the blue collar workmen who are on the shop floor have access to and own the latest gadgets. And in, a, in one of the discussions we felt when you go in for one of the ERP systems, they felt it's okay in an IT environment where everyone has a system, everyone accesses, but will it work in a non-IT company? But when we did a big dipstick study, we figured out that it might work as well in other environments as in a knowledge-intensive industry. Similarly, then what different generations seek? So there is a context to it. Since I said most people are uh, Gen Y, I think there is a lot of premium which is placed on uh, learning and career advancement over uh, compensation and uh, bonus or uh, health and fitness. And where it is played out in um, we look at how priorities shift depending on the age. Maybe you know you focus on. Uh, on a house or a car and take care of parents early on in one's career but as you move forward then your children education and asset creation take priority and towards once you are 40 45 plus the emphasis shifts to higher education health care and, uh, and retirement benefits there's so much of focus so therefore there are contradictions in terms of expectations from this generation, particularly in the context of heightened uncertainties in the economy. So what it means to several employees, when we did a study in a small way and we did some literature survey, we figured out that the expectations are very contradictory in the sense that people want an entrepreneurial culture and entrepreneurial environment and also a lot of job stability and hand-holding. A survey says that the freshers today look for very supporting and very encouraging leadership and bosses at the workplace, whereas they also seek the spirit of freedom and entrepreneurship. Every time we talk about performance management, and I think we will be talking about it soon because the year is coming to a close, people always ask for well-defined roles. Whereas, tell me what my deliverables are, very well defined roles. And at the same time, people want variety at work. And so, there is an inbuilt contradiction in that. And similarly, challenging work, stretch goals, and work life balance. But I think employees will want more, more, want both. And therefore, we need to figure out a way of offering. And what do we pay them with? You know, there are several, um, several things, you know, work meaningfulness, premium pay, leadership training, affiliation, etc., etc. And to give a slightly global perspective, we have picked it up from a study. How does it vary for India, which is a developing market, compared to a developed market? What do employers focus on and what, what do employees focus on? For example, in a developing market such as ours, employer focus on employers focus on creating some new employee value proposition to improve engagement and reduce attrition. Because there is huge attrition, which about which we have talked enough over the last maybe about five, six years, seven years, and we may be talking for the next about five, six, seven, eight years. So there's a lot of focus on that. And when it comes to employee, in our context, they don't look for cash over development, career advancement, or employer brand, etc. So there is preference here to development and career advancement scope as opposed to cash. Whereas in developed market, you never know till what time the company exists, till what time one can earn. So therefore, the priority is on cash. So distilled essence of several surveys by the Hewitts and Mercers of the world from different geographies. And the management's focus predominantly on cost optimization as opposed to driving engagement and reducing attrition. So that's the difference. So what we looked at internally was to create a model of total rewards. And 
and I would be sharing some of the key uh, aspects of uh, how we have tried to integrate some of these things and several things have had several starts and some false starts too and this is, a, this is all work in progress. So I don't know whether there is a finished product ever when it comes to HR because by the time we realize that we are perfecting a process there is another practice that comes and then we start drifting towards the next practice. So these are practice and next practice as opposed to any <laughs> best practice. Now, this model talks about uh, an experiential element and a financial uh, piece. And also what can be customized for the individual and what applies for the company as a whole. For example, the environment in terms of the brand experience and in terms of culture and climate is for the company as a whole and it is more experiential in nature. Similarly, the development philosophy, the investment philosophy on people is for the organization as a whole. Whereas, what attracts the individuals, what is applicable for the individual is his compensation, his bonus plan, or his long-term incentive, health and uh, welfare, retirement benefits, etc. So, our brand promise after studying all of this, what we did was we engaged with a, with a, with a uh, service provider of repute to help us out in discovering our brand promise based on what is realistically possible and what our people are experiencing and what is it that we can afford. And we spent about 1,000 man hours of time cutting across leadership levels and uh, different businesses and crafted a policy which is talking about values, fairness and transparency in all our dealings and we promised three things to our employees. One is providing challenging opportunities and encouraging learning by investing in and creating opportunities for people to learn and enhance career opportunities in terms of preferring people to be promoted from within, rotating them and grooming them for opportunities at a higher level. But there have been a uh, large number of lateral hiring that's, that's taken place to meet the requirement. I'm sure lateral hiring will still continue to take place, but certainly we have made a promise and we are investing in people and identifying several initiatives uh, to, to support this kind of a... Obviously, compensation is not there as <laughs> brand promise because we thought we may not be the best paymasters, but certainly there are a lot of other things which appeals to this um, generation of people. So what do we do? in terms of uh, challenging assignments is clear roles with elements of stretch and goals, involvement in developmental projects and key assignments, and a platform to innovate. So what we have done is our performance assessment and development system has been refreshed recently, and we have made a lot of improvements to it through engaging with uh, experts in the field and a benchmark study carried out with several organizations and we have embarked upon an innovation journey again working with some people who have uh, uh, had success in this field working with some companies in our ecosystem. In the area of learning we believe in what we do is we link to business results there are several solution focused uh, learning programs are being initiated and we have created a professional development architecture I'll briefly touch upon that and we are, we are collaborating with uh, several institutions. Now we have a leadership development academy which is called Rana Institute for Employee Development which handles it. And in terms of career opportunities, we have a talent review uh, panel which addresses the uh, career management of people across levels. We call it 3P, people with uh, performance and potential. Now some, some aspects of our performance assessment and uh, development system, we, we took, a, took it upon ourselves to review this last year. Idea was to align it with focus area for the current decade, which is profitable growth and sustaining and enhancing our operational excellence. See, ours is a field where the predominant focus is on operational excellence because these are uh, areas where quality and reliability are extremely important. and. Uh, serving customers who have very demanding quality standards. So which is why you would find that companies in our space, including ourselves, have several quality accreditations, like a couple of our companies have got the Deming Grand Prize 
which is about, you know, there are only 22 companies worldwide and six companies in India have. But the idea is we invested heavily and which is predominantly through what we call as uh, in Japanese lingo, total employee involvement, which is at the base of uh, this in terms of creating and sustaining a culture of continuous improvement, which is about QCCs and suggestion schemes and Kaizen's and, and a few other uh, important initiatives. So that is one area where there is a lot of emphasis. Uh, then we looked at several other uh, aspects. Now what all this has resulted in is uh, the process flow we have streamlined because to, to be able to deliver on uh, our brand promise of giving them a good experience in terms of job is concerned for the management staff, this is an important vehicle at the end of the day because the whole job is experienced by him through this one exercise called annual performance appraisal process. When we talk to several people to figure out which is that one process which is very important for you, which, uh, you know, which you've done well, you'll go and sleep that day very well. And that happened to be this performance appraisal process. And if it is not done well, I think it doesn't sleep for several days. So straight away, I think. Uh, so therefore, we thought, let's try and uh, start working on it while you can never claim to have achieved the best. Uh, so we also introduced innovation as one of the important uh, competencies and we sort of uh, categorized the entire uh, population into three sectors junior middle just three sections junior middle and senior and a differentiated set of six competencies and we developed what are the indicators for those competencies and when did a lot of work involving the entire cross section of our people and uh, the idea of doing this in the creation process was to make sure that we promote a healthy dialogue between assessor and assessee. Otherwise, uh, you know, having a checklist and ticking and giving numbers, whether it is online, offline, paper, pencil version was very easy, but doesn't result in uh, anything which is tangible. So we thought we will make a humble move uh, towards promoting a healthy dialogue. And even if the, uh, the process success rate was about 50% in the first couple of years, as long as the time spent on quality dialoguing improves and if it creates a culture of conducting crucial conversations very well, we thought the purpose would be achieved. And I think that was the only dimension in which at least the quantity of time has gone up after the first uh, year, first cycle of implementation. We took a quick feedback and we're happy to share with you that that's one dimension where at least the time spent has increased because of the way the format is structured and flow has been streamlined. And uh, uh, we have had a lot of process focus as a TQM organization, but we thought we need to give a lot of important to, importance to results as well. So therefore, we changed the weights across different levels. So we rebalanced and readjusted the weights to, to align with bringing in performance focus in line with the changed vision for the next decade. And uh, of course, uh, the individual development plan and fixing owners on... Um, or one as a what would you say, giving a process handle to HR and line to work on the individual development plan was another area which was not there which we introduced and I think hopefully over a three year period we would find some level of uh, implementation. And this is our uh, development architecture, we focus on um, uh, different levels. First is for the fresh hires, we have two programs called management development program and engineer manpower development program. The next level is uh, RANE Emerging Managers Program. For middle management, we have RANE Advanced uh, Management Program, RIMP and RAMP, which we have uh, uh, designed in consultation with uh, an IIM and uh, we, have, we are delivering it jointly, both at our uh, premises and uh, at the IIM Bangalore, a program for senior uh, leaders. The objective are frontline managers, developing potential leaders and finally, potential uh, business leaders and uh, and this has uh, helped us significantly in the last uh, couple of years that about 50% uh, of positions have been filled from within which wasn't so earlier and uh, and uh, the tendency to be turning to outside help for any requirement has come down considerably though it continues to be there and we are also looking at new opportunities such as I was reading with interest the next session social media for hiring etc we also <laughs> into it so uh, signed up with some people so it's there but I'm sure it's, it's complementing very well while um, growing from 
within and later lies there is a nice blend and we have a talent uh, review panel meeting i'm sure it's uh, like it works in several companies we spend at least uh, the entire leadership uh, team spends at least two full days to to address it. twice a year it meets spends two full days in assessing all potential candidates which could be about 100 in number and uh, figuring out each one where does he come from what are his idps aspirations expectations which have been captured to make sure that we can do our best to grow them for the next level ideas to have a have succession depth and uh, create a line of sight for exceptional performers and make sure that uh, we we have a system and attention in place for addressing their aspirations and expectations management so these are the three areas essentially where uh, uh, we have done some work and uh, be happy to respond to some questions as we go along and the in this certain certain aspects that uh, that stand as challenges is uh, there is a lot of competitive pressure competitive pressure for compensation because compensation level beyond a point it's a question of demand supply certainly while worth of a job and uh, how much the company can pay and what is its compensation philosophy one basket the other one is a demand supply factor the other one is in terms of cost pressures so from both sides there will be challenges and there are several regulatory requirements right now it's perhaps we don't feel the pinch of it as much but certainly lots of talks about lot of ratios you know and uh, and uh, how much is top to bottom and lowest to the highest paid there's a lot of attention lot of visibility so when it comes to compensation i think we got to be careful about uh, such ratios and uh, ranges and it's aligned with our talent strategy like where do you want to position which talent what percentile and what quartile where you want to place which of your talent which is your comparator basket where do you want to differentiate again when we talk about total rewards not necessarily compensation it could be other aspects as well like we discussed earlier and there is uh, this diversity which is which is there you know so these are all expectations in terms of who wants what so the needs are very different for different kinds of people so how much how far can we tailor make total rewards to a philosophy of n equal to 1 today people talk about n equal to 1 strategy but uh, how practical is that and to what extent we can differentiate and um, you know whether n equal to 1 means giving a menu and uh, allowing people to choose from that and and the regulatory you know, framework today allows only so much of a menu option and a menu i mean ceases to mean anything much if you got to be very very uh, regulatory requirement compliant so thank you so much for this opportunity and i hope all of you are awake <laughs> i mean, that's nice <laughs> so my huh no i didn't want to trouble you then <laughs> i thought you know troubling at the wrong time could <laughs> spell disaster and ganesh will come yeah thank you yeah maybe i'll i'll be there and come up later one job of waking people up so I don't know whether TCS is paying. I should check with Ravi whether TCS is paying his uh, uh, funding to MMA properly because they just managed to make sure that Ravi gets the session in the morning, and I get it. I think that's what the typical challenge of business gets whatever they want, and HR gets only after everything is being given. <laughs> that's one of the things. Second thing is, uh, I was I was intrigued to know that they said, "Hey, you have 19 min or 20 minutes, and then you have 19 minutes, and you have five minutes for question." It all almost sounded like uh, trying to get Harry Potter's seven films or eight films into a 20-minute capsule, saying uh, things like, hey, "You know what? There's a guy called Harry Potter. There's a guy called Hermione. Lady called Hermione. Then there's Voldemort. And there's a fight between good and bad. 
the use of lot of vans and snakes, and finally the good wins over the bad. End of Harry Potter. And uh, lady makes millions of pounds. Hopefully, I'm going to have much more time on this and then speak, but I do conscious of some of the uh, people who have come down to the next uh, session. So I'll probably, hopefully, um, make you guys to think, probably ask more questions, probably at, at the end of it. <clears throat> uh, I thought I'm not technology challenge, but I thought I'd just straight away get into this. Uh, the topic I'm going to talk about is integration of uh, new joinees. I'm sure I can always see eyebrows going and disturbing the front airline saying, what are the topics to be discussed about? This is something that we do for a living in our organization. But then if you realize an organization which is 250,000 people and growing 60,000 people every year, trying to get people on board is a challenge. As global head of recruitment, when I fly, I find three sets of people sitting next to me. One who is a TCSer, one who wants to be a TCSer, and one who was a TCSer. So you always have this particular problem of always getting in. So the challenge that we always had was this, that uh, trying to get in people to join you and then trying to get them understand your culture and values because each one of them comes with a very distinct genetic uh, <clears throat> mapping of the previous organization. I used to work in TVS and it took me a lot of time when I joined TCS to keep on saying TCS, TCS. I had to tell myself every day, hey, I'm not in TVS, I'm in TCS. So it takes time. And those are non-IT days. And there was so much of ingraining that happened in HR over the speed of time. And imagine these days, so it becomes even more difficult. I, I saw the slides that Venkat had put on Gen Y, Gen Z and all that. Believe me, I am one guy who goes at a victim of all those because I recruit 50,000 people or 45,000 people every year. You learn a lot. The other day I just saw a quote which said, uh, where a mom, sorry, where a mother asked, uh, I don't want to say daughter because they'll call me sexist, uh, a son to toast a bread. And then the son asked, mom, do I make the sandwich and put the bread in landscape or portrait? <laughs> so that's how thinking is more going on. M-O-U-S-C -O -O is no more mouse or neither mousey, something else. So things are changing, terminals are changing. IT companies tend to have a lot of three letter words and four letter words, only you can understand. You know, when I look at things from 39,000 feet, I was wondering what is so ingrained about 39,000 feet. I asked some of the pilots, does 39,000 feet mean something where you cut off oxygen or you put more oxygen? They said, Ganesh, there is no this thing for this because I understand from pilots that typically after 9,500, 9, you need to have oxygen to fly. I mean, this is what I understand. So then traditionally we have heard about wordings like carrot and stick. The problem is nobody ever told us how much of carrot and how much of stick. So over a period of time, IT companies tend to use many terminologies and when you get into your organization, people of different colors, shapes, sizes, religions and languages, it becomes even more complex to make them integrate, not induct. Onboarding anybody can do. Integrate is where the challenge is coming in. So one of the business challenges we had was to onboard these sort of people. Uh, the solution was to move them from a lateral uh, um, induction into integration and the results was uh, you'd find that I'm using some data point out of 2009, 10 and all that because as the largest private employer in India, anything we come on stage and say is the best practice, we know we should stand the test of time. <clears throat> because anything you bring in is only an initiative and if it does not sustain beyond you, then there's no point. That's why. Our data points refer sometimes to 10 and 11 because it's taken us one year to implement, one year to follow up, and one year to make sure it really sustains beyond those guys who introduced this particular concept. <clears throat> All of us are aware the world is full of uncertainties. This is definitely not India. I just want to tell you guys if you thought this was India. This is either Hungary or US. And I know many of you won't believe this. Why I put this slide is uh, this is sometimes the problems that Indian IT people face. When you are probably between three to five years of experience, you always have the green light. In India, employment for IT people is not a problem. Being employable is always a challenge. Gray hairs and bald that does not matter. I'm, not, I'm talking only for myself. What is gray inside the head, that particular period of time only matters. Cutting edge technology turns to bleeding edge technology. So if you are not current, if you are not relevant, you become completely irrelevant pretty fast. I mean, you can keep on going on into Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Z, and then again Gen A will become. So N is equal to 1 uh, always comes in the picture there. So it's always a challenge that we are in. So given this scenario of wanting to onboard people, attract people, then it always becomes a challenge. 
just to give you some statistics, for every 100 guys we uh, um, interview, we finally land up with selecting around 9, and finally 4.5 or 5 guys join you. So that's the volume that you have to look at it if you have to get people. So let's deep dive into the uh, problem statement, keeping the 20 minutes uh, uh, <clears throat> gun on my head. This, this is a challenge that we had. The strength of TC, the total manpower strength of TCS in the year FY06 was 50,000 people. In the year FY11, FY12, each year I recruited 60,000 people. So you can just imagine the growth that has happened. The strength of TCS in FY06 was 50,000. In the year FY11 alone, I recruited 60,000 people. So you brought in completely two probably mid-sized organizations into your company and, and across the globe. So how do you make sure the values, the systems, the processes that your company have, you make sure it is being done? I remember a quote long time back which said, uh, a man from Manila rode a tiger with a smile on his face. And after some time, the tiger rode back in the forest with a man inside and a smile on his face. So this is what happens most of the time. When newcomers join in, they come with a lot of thoughts and processes. But when they join an organization, many a time, <clears throat> they get what we call the old boys association, <laughs> old school association, or the cliques that you have from, I don't want to name colleges, they're all there. So you're never able to get in. So if you have to get 40,000, 50,000 lateral recruits across the world, come into your organization and effectively integrate and perform, not leave an organization, it's going to be extremely complex. So that's why I want to spend some time on this slide and next slide so that you understand the complexity of what we are talk talking about. Now what happens? One is <clears throat> the challenge. The second thing is a lot of things happen when a, when a guy leaves, especially in the IT industry, not that manufacturing is not. The challenge is a lot of people are curious about what is he going? What is that he or she is going to offer? And more importantly, organization, including myself, when you get a guy, we always ask, do you have any similar people like that? So when one goes, it's just not one. The sheep, sheep mentality always goes. So that's a huge challenge that you have to handle. It's just not one that you need to look at it. <clears throat> the third component is from an organization perspective or a project perspective, because the supervisor of the project is extremely upset because he or she would have asked for this addition of people because they were probably trying to add the project or probably replace the project. So if you're going to have somebody who's going to join you and leave you at a very short notice, it's going to have tremendous impact because the cost of replacement is always two times the existing cost. And you can work out a thumb rule cost. It's always true. The time to hire and no guy comes and joins you at less than what he or she was getting in a previous organization, right? So you have to pay a premium. And if you definitely go through head and toes or something like that, they're going to have a premium. The time you're going to take to train the person, and more importantly, the loss of face in front of the clients. So many times clients tell us, Ganesh, how many times you keep seeing people coming and going? So we have some service levels also to meet in terms of what sort of percentage we're going to have in terms of arthritis. <clears throat> so the numbers, the ripple effect, and the real impact you can understand if you are not going to integrate people, when you're going to take in 50,000, 60,000 people, is huge. A lot of times people ask, what is the value addition of HR? And this question probably for the last 22 years from my ad to things I keep on hearing this. <clears throat> I wish I can ask many other people the same question. The question is, if you can really add value and go back to the business and say, hey, you know what, I recruited 2,000 guys. And out of 2,000 guys, 40% are the top tier performance rating. The next one is the next. And this is how they have done it. And per hour building of $50. And overall, the value addition to the organization out of recruitment that we have made is probably $1 billion. Or the cost that I saved is very high is something. So this is something that in our organization we keep on measuring as to what is ROA the recruitment team prims in. We are responsible for three. One is performance. Second is the stay. <clears throat> Third is the ability to, for them to quickly integrate and be mobile over a period of time. So when I said the previous slide, I'm sure some of you would have thought, yeah, maybe it is not so much of a challenge. But uh, I thought I'll just put this line there and then ask, is it, is it not a very easy problem to handle? The answer is definitely a no, for the following two reasons, especially. One is the scale. If you're going to hire 60,000 people, 50,000 people year on year, the ability to integrate and manage scale is going to become extremely complex, which I anyway alluded before. The second point is this. Look at the geographical spread. Probably other than Antarctica, we are there everywhere. And 
if you are going to hire guys in latam argentina mexico uruguay uh, you name it where english need not have to be the uh, language of communication you have a problem you go to china you have a problem i don't want to use the word problem but then you always have challenges <clears throat> one is we hire across four continents and 82 countries so your hr policies or organization policies has to be global in nature global policies which is customized to the local needs i just want to give you an example when you brought in some policies and you started implementing our systems in some of the places um, we had a policy saying if you go overseas you can take a spouse beyond 6 months you go overseas so bang we send a mail and then the mail comes back saying sorry we don't have uh, we don't have um, spouses here we have partners please change your policy that was hungary so as a chair person has to have a global thing of before you put a policy it's very very important to look at who is going to impact we we have the tata administrative service the age limit is given as 27 bank came to think from the us you can't put age limits in the us but then we have to fine tune us saying this is purely for people from india and for us is national secretary is very very different <clears throat> so each of your policies has to be customized so when you do onboarding or indication induction or integration you have to keep in mind this particular two points one is the volume of people you are bringing in the second is the scale the third is the diversity and diversity gets added more more on just to take the us <clears throat> we have 42 TCS offices, and we have more than 400 client locations. And in most of the client, most of the recruitment that happens in the US, a lot of guys don't come into our offices; they go directly into client location. And for that individual, what he sees as a manager or the project is what TCS is all about. They don't know many things about the Tata culture or the Tatas or things like that. For him, the project they join, the, the pro particular project manager whom he sees, is what the TCS is. So this is a situation uh, we are uh, we were getting into, and then of course, uh, if this looks very familiar, I mean, I'm sure it's all happening in every organization. So when an individual leaves, when a lateral recruitment leaves, when an experienced professional leaves, the buck is always passed, and of course, the supervisor has always said it's a recruitment mistake and HR mistake, and of course, I always say HR is equal to cricket, right? You can always sit in the box and say Sachin shouldn't have played the shot, but you go and play the shot, you will know. So it's always like that. And then, of course, the recruiter is always a self-proclaimed uh, analyst who keeps on saying, "I did my job well," and then you know what happened in the project. We are not responsible for. Ultimately, you need to worry about the individual who joined us, the poor guy who took the decision to come and join you. We need to be very extremely. Just. So the ma the fact of the matter is, I use the word infant attrition because I'm sure every organization has got its own way of calculating. We look at infant attrition as somebody who has not stuck up in a company less than one year. I'm sure that's a thumb rule, but that's what we look at it. So infant attrition is an organizational problem and it needs to be collectively owned it's just not an hr problem neither it is just a business problem i think collectively it has to be owned <clears throat> what we then did is uh, as in every organization we got together a um, team of people hr business line admin support all the people who can make a decision and then we got these guys to form a cross functional team across the world <laughs> we met over a period of 3 months we interviewed close to around 4000 people who joined us across continents and asked them what is the challenge they typically have when they join an organization like tcs and what are the expectations <clears throat> this is necessarily not a maslow's hierarchy of needs but then this is what they heard the immediate retention things that matter most during the first few months are systems and tools they just want to get their hands on the laptop they want to understand what are the tools that is required for them to perform that something do it so i just want you to keep this in mind when i refer back to the next few slides other thing is they need to be extremely clear about the roles and responsibilities just can't say you are going to be in migration project and then when they come down they work on maintenance project to you it could be different versions of truth but they would like to hear a single version of truth so it's going to be extremely extremely important from a credibility perspective The second thing is the type of people and leadership that they are going to work on. That's going to be extremely critical. The second thing is the process and policies. Is this organization going to do the Indian way, or is this organization going to do the international way? Am I going to be <clears throat> one small fish in the big ocean, or am I going to be like a oceanarium where if I grow better, I am going to get more visibility? Processes and policies. This has to be extremely important. I think Venkat, you also referred to that in this. 
it has to be extremely, extremely clear about your policies and processes and how it is going to be implemented. You should not allow an employee to go and grapple with and trying to find out from people whom you know what your company policy is. It has to be extremely transparent and more importantly, it has to appear that you are uniformly implementing it. That's going to be extremely important. <clears throat> and of course, recognition. And there's, a, and, and there's a particular reason why those boxes end uh, later on, that's basically because as they spend more and more time in the organization, the needs are changing over a period of time. So career growth is, thing is going to be the important thing. <clears throat> and one of the things I spoke about was, these are some of the important stakeholders, I mean you can name it differently in the organization, who are responsible to make sure that talent integration happens in time. One of the things we learned that we are doing talent integration and making sure that stakeholders did the job was this. First of all, we need to integrate this, these guys first, and that's what we need to do, that we need to first integrate the stakeholders themselves because they're all working in silos. As you grow larger and larger, <clears throat> what happens is you have siloed organization, span of control changes, and it is important for them to understand that the next process is a customer. And if you don't understand that particular process, then you get into trouble. So one of the first learnings that we need, we learned is, First, get your teams together as integrated one team so that they realize at the end of the day, I need to collaboratively work together to make sure the newcomer who comes in <clears throat> settles very well. And that's why I have Mr. Atanada's quote and ultimately said it's not about I, it's about we. Uh, I thought it was very relevant over here. Uh, <clears throat> and the solution, uh, what we thought was that uh, it's going to be very, very important that we connect with people pre on and post-joining. I mean, that's not rocket science. And we need to look at talent integration as a continuous process and not a one-time uh, uh, intervention. And as we grow bigger and bigger, there has to be an online connect. There has to be a portal which will help us <clears throat> do this. And that's exactly what I did, what we call the My Integration Portal. So what happens in this talent integration portal? I don't want to make you guys read all this. Is <clears throat> We have completely uh, made sure and compartmentalized these three things. Uh, I want to be very careful with the choice of words that we use because in IT we tend to use words which sometimes scares people. I was flying with one of the executive directors of SBI the other day and uh, he had come through from one of the TCS presentations and then he said, Ganesh, you guys scared us a lot. I said, so what happened? You know, one of the young guys came and made a presentation and told us, um, sir, in this particular project we can help you do a lot of data manipulation. And imagine what does a data manipulation to your banker means. So that's why I was very, extremely careful in terms of using some of the uh, slides over there. What we did is we compartmentalized the particular problem in making sure that the pre-joining, on-joining um, on and post-joining, we clearly have uh, people who will handle it, <clears throat> do it very, very differently, engage the individual even before he or she comes and joins. We have constant coffee connects where we also call the spouses, the partners, whoever it is to come and join us because we ultimately believe, we do, whether we like it or not in India, we don't employ individuals, it's like marriage. In India, people say marriage is between families. You won't believe, I heard in the morning session, uh, Sridhar Ganesh talking about uh, uh, helping the other things. Today, in IT industry, if you recruit fresh engineers, you almost employ their uh, families, uh, sometimes the prospective in-laws also. <laughs> they, they come and tell you where the guy has to be posted or she has to be posted because some, somebody is already engaged to somebody, so make sure he's posted in Calcutta. Somebody's horoscope is not well, so please make sure the next six months is posted in one branch, otherwise he'll never get married, so please do that. So, we go through all this. So, in India, you employ the entire family. And the entire family decides which company you should choose and which discipline you should choose. Actually, all of us have gone through this. But coming back from an overseas perspective, it is extremely important because we need to be very, very clear and articulative in terms of what is the role the individual is going to uh, do. So that is why we decided that the talent integration portal that we have clearly articulates the three important part of pre-joining, on-joining and post-joining <clears throat> and we have on-call support at any point of time. What does it mean is even before the individual comes into the uh, organization, he or she is done with all the paperwork and on the first day what they do is more about the organization, their role. We typically ask the five questions when they join. Do I know my role? Do I know who is my supervisor and do I know what is my career going to be in the next two to three years? These are the points that get discussed. All the paperwork and all things about organization is a connected world. 
Nobody wants to come and hear about TCS on the same day, the same slides. They all know well about it or we give them the link for them to know about it. <clears throat> and what do you do during the talent integration feature is a phased approach to, to make sure that the integration runs for one year, not just one day, two day, one week or 30 days. We have a structured process by which you make sure the first 360 days he or she is taken care of and more importantly he or she knows what am I supposed to do in this organization. <clears throat> so one is a phased approach. Second is extremely comprehensive and it's all standardized. When I say standardized, it's, it's, te it's not templatized because the way we index somebody with very senior experience is very, very different from the way we onboard somebody and have uh, integration done for relatively somebody junior. You need to make sure that we do that also. And we are leveraging um, um, online, actually being an IT company where 80% of the training happens through that. I think this morning session, Ravi alluded to the particular thing of Nomi, where it's almost becoming like a Facebook over there and things that um, morning before I came, I, I was happy to note, I'm sure all of you have also been extremely disturbed with whatever we have been seeing over the last two days on the TV. And I was extremely happy to know that not only my organization, across IT organizations, they all combined together to come back and then contribute some money for that uh, uh, lady who gone through that uh, agony. I think sometimes we feel as an Indian, you put our heads shame and as more as a man, you feel more bad that something like that has happened. So this IT is going virulent over there and it's important as an IT company that uh, <clears throat> we get connected uh, over a period of time. And this is what I just want to touch base. So having told you about the problem, having told you about the approach you have taken, I just want to let you know about this tool, which probably Mr. Ravi Shnathan spoke to you in the morning. This is called Ultimatix. <clears throat> in TCS, we have a lot of love for asterisks. So like Getafix and other things, we all call it as Ultimatix. This is the world's largest single installation of Oracle apps. This defines completely like the SDLC, the PDLC of an employee in the organization. Like software development life cycle, we call it the people development life cycle. From the time he or she has accepted the offer, from the time he or she wants to leave the organization or retire, this one single login instance con <clears throat> connects the individual to the organization fully. Um, 20 years in TCS have taught you many things. One, in fact, I did some best practices. So I went to Adobe, I went to Google, um, I went to AAG, I went to Amex last year and found out uh, four or five best practices. And I asked them, how does the performance appraisal done? So all of them gave me a grimace. Many of the HR guys smiled. And uh, I tell you, which are all the organizations in India, wherever you guys are completing a appraisal in time, I think you guys all need a pat, up, pat on the back because many of these organizations don't complete the appraisal in time. I, was, I met them in August and the appraisal was supposed to be in June. And I can tell you with pride, not because of anything, in TCS, March 31st, everybody completes the appraisal and at the end of the quarter, that day results, on that day evening, everybody gets a letter. And this is across the world, 2 lakh, 45,000, 50, 50,000. My Q3 results are down, so I can't release the numbers right now. And it's taken time. If you all think it's all taken over a period of time, sorry, no. It has taken probably uh, 10 years to do this. And as an IT organization, we keep on <clears throat> uh, learning, unlearning, and relearning uh, some of the mistakes that we have done. Uh, this, this is what it done. So this Ultimatix is a single point uh, login, which helps the individual to know everything that's happening in the organization. This is the connect. <clears throat> this is what he or she is getting connected across the world. All 254,000 employees of TCS are connected to this. They get the same communication, maybe in different languages, probably 72 languages or 22 languages at the same time. So what we did this for onboarding is to use this platform and bring in something called the My Integration Portal, where the individual will know, you can see on the left hand side, uh, My Integration Roadmap of some of the ASEAN countries in ANZ, Europe, Hong Kong, India. So I mean, I'm not going to click into this button, but then if you go into each of these things, it will clearly tell them what are the policies? What are the things that they need to do? <clears throat> what is their responsibility? What is HR's responsibility? Who can they go to? What are the things they can look for? What are the career growth available? At least for the next 365 days to 700 days. Because IT industry is, is happening so much that you cannot predict what is going to happen beyond two to three years. But at least gives them the roadmap saying, hey, if I continue in the way what I am supposed to be doing, I will be there somewhere. If I have a particular problem in terms of understanding a technology, here is NOMAX, knowledge management system, which will tell me I have a problem. If I have a challenge with my supervisor or something else happens, whom I go to, here it is. 
So everything that happens to an individual in an organization is all through a click of button. Just because I say that doesn't mean that, that the lack of, lack of soft touch, our ratio of uh, HR to um, uh, total number of people is 1 is to 300, in some places 1 is to 250. So we have close around 1,800 to 2,000 HR people to manage 254,000. I understand as per best practice, it's still not a good ratio. Some of the overseas organizations have 1 is to 100. If you have to keep the good business HR in that. So it really helps to connect with them and tell them, here is one login which will help you get connect, completely connected with your uh, <coughs> organization, and this is what it is. And this is the last slide before I penalty made slide. And this, if you can go through the slide quickly, it will tell you what is the pre-joining support that he or she can get, and what are the responsibilities. See, one thing we realize that we are not dealing with uh, um, blue-collar work or something. They are all IT professionals. As somebody said, a professional is somebody who can self-certify the work. That's what a professional is. You don't need engineering degrees for that. So as a professional, we also have placed the responsibility on the individual to also know, hey, it is my equal responsibility to make sure I also get integrated in the organization. <clears throat> so while we are clearly articulated in terms of pre-joining support, my first day at TCS, my first week in TCS and move on, it's apparent, it's clear, it's transparent right at the beginning what are some of the things he or she has to get and what are some of the things he or she has to do? So responsibility and authority go together. It's not some HR guy or HR girl coming and telling you do this, you do this. That has never happened. I don't think it's ever going to happen. So this portal helps and the individual completely knows <clears throat> what are some of the things I need to do. For example, he or she has a problem in terms of salary fitment. You know exactly what is required to do. Performance appraisal, grievance management system, transfer process. Uh, <clears throat> today I have around some 7,000, 8,000 transfer requests. You will be very intrigued to know about this. Many of them are coming from engineering trainees. And when they, when I interview all of them, everybody wants to get posted anywhere in India. And the moment they get an offer and they want to join, they have so much of problem over there. So how do you manage those grievances? How do you manage um, the problems? Because as you say, Gen Y, the challenges are very, very different. Uh, especially if they, if they come from a state board and then they come into a college um, um, education sorry, institution like TCS where it challenges you right from the beginning, the learnability is very bad. So you get into many of these cases with suicidal tendencies and then you deal beyond the family. So this portal helps you. You have an employer assistance program through this. There's a Facebook where he or she can ventilate. There's a uh, portal in this called Just Ask. I mean, uh, so long as you're not... Uh, abuse you of anybody, you can talk on any topic. You think Kamala uh, uh, new movie is going to be a hit or as usual is going to get into trouble. I am sure there is going to be something like that. Or you think Dhoni or Sachin is going to be that because we need to be current or incidents that have been happening. So when an individual gets into the organization, what is expected out of him or her at the right in the beginning is made clear and this portal really helps. And please understand the scale. If my Overseas hiring is close to around 4,000 people every year across probably 82 geographies, probably minus India. And in none of the locations they join a TCS office organization, it becomes extremely complex to do it. And so that is why we brought this particular integration portal to make sure he or she gets the same feel and touch in terms of TCS, TCS values, TCS cultures and things like that. What gets measured gets done. I spoke about 20% attrition way back in 2009-2010. Today, I'm talking only about infant attrition. It's close to around uh, 9%. By the way, our overall attrition is also around 9.8. But I don't want to claim, or my team, or HR, or TCS wants to claim credit just because of this, the way we onboard people and integrate them as a result in this. The world economy also has played a very important part on this. I think it's important to keep it in mind. But the fact of the matter is, it has opened up our eyes as HR people, as business people to many things. One, anything you do, take a global view. Think before you implement. This is something that I learned from manufacturing. I moved from manufacturing to IT, taught me a few things, very good things which are standing in good stead. Some of my seniors are there. I think I should be thankful for all those people over there. In manufacturing, most of the time you deal with uh, emotions. In IT, you deal with egos. Each 254,000 people are all a bundle of egos. Unless you know how to handle them, you are going to have a lot, lot of problems on this. Second thing, in most of the time, at least I am speaking for myself, 
In manufacturing, before I implement anything, I used to think thousand times because I don't want my upma or puri to be on the ceiling. But in, in IT, we always implement and come up with excuses to why we did it. So this is again one of the learnings. So all these learnings has gone through over a period of time to make sure, but I can say it with certainty over the last two years. That's why I said I don't want to talk it as a best practice unless we have seen clear, measurable <coughs> and uh, sustainable way of integrating people. We have seen tremendous feedback from um, our own customers, that is all the newcomers that they feel today much more wanted in TCS. And one of the good measures for that is today, 34% of all the recruitment that I do for lateral recruits come from being your buddies. I don't want to do much work. And that saves a hell of a lot of cost because the retention rate among bring your buddies is phenomenal. And more importantly, he or she would have done the groundwork saying, hey, you know what, I'm getting 20 lakhs, don't ask more than 20 lakhs. So that solves my problem also. You don't want to go for a dispensation, you don't want to worry for something. <clears throat> so this is what I had, but I just want to end with something. I understand the biggest room in the world is room for improvement. We continue to improve on whatever we are doing. But it has been a tremendous learning over the last three years as we grow. <clears throat> Growth is becoming a challenge. I never joined, I joined Tweezers 20 years back and then that was 800 people. And many times when I go for some of the seminars in TCS and give my employee number, they think that two numbers are missing, my employee number. Because I got four numbers and the current number is going to seven. <clears throat> so this is what we have done. We have a long way to go, but I think over a period of time we have learned, I don't want to say the art, we have learned at least to do few things clear and hopefully it will help us sustain uh, to move higher and higher than what we are today. Thank you very much for the patient hearing. Thank you very much. The floor is now open for questions. If there are any questions, uh, please pass on the question slip or you could use the mic. Good evening, sir. Thank you for those uh, concepts on people integration. One of the challenges today the industry is facing, especially on the hiring side, how do we make uh, young talent uh, look beyond compensation? Uh, make them more look towards career rather than compensation because um, today the focus on career is missing and uh, the rush is more on the compensation. So how do we bring uh, best practices on those areas if there's anything that uh, you've experienced, uh, I would love you to share that with you guys. Um, I'm going to make Venkat also answer this question because one thing I learned in management is when you're in doubt, delegate. When you're in trouble, mumble. So, <laughs> But I can answer this question coming from there. See, one thing I can tell you that is you're not going to beat the competition in terms of compensation. My company is not the best paymaster in the world. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not afraid to do it because I know I have a standing. You need to add value to the individual who come in. You need to make your employee so enriched in his knowledge that he is available for the competitor. That's all it is. Many times including the visa officer asked me, 22 years, something is wrong with you. That's why in IT companies you have long service award for 3 years, in BPO you have for 1 year. That's why I'm saying the greatest thing about TCS is, is this multiplicity of projects, multiplicity of geography and multiplicity of platforms. If you can't add value to the individual who has come to you, you will go. Today loyalty is not to organization, it's to the technology. So you need to constantly add value to the individual, otherwise he or she is not going to be there. And by the way, most of our HR people also are guilty about it. So I just want to make that clear. So it's not that those IT guys only do it, we are also part of it. If we don't add value to ourselves or organization don't add value to individuals, individuals will not stay and that's a simple truth. I mean, you go to a restaurant, you are not treated well, you will go to somebody else. So that's the question of demand and supply. And I have seen enough in 2000 where guys used to come to me in the US and say I want to work on Fox Pro for $5 because they will see my TCS name and Amex card. And I have seen in 2008 uh, guys who are all having two horns come down to earth and they said give me some work, I will work. So the geography and the history of many times, the economy also teaching a lot of people words. So that's why I'm happy sometimes every two years there's a 
crest and trough in economy because many of us are put into reality of those. So don't try to beat the competition on that. Try to add value. I think that's why people will stay. That's my view. Venkat. You know, in such situations, I've also learned from another meeting that I got to completely endorse what Ganesh says <laughs> first, right? Uh, no, I mean, I, I just add on to that. Uh, in terms of uh, the employability index, it's, it's pretty low today is what we keep hearing. So where is the question of your freshers' ability to command a certain kind of starting salary? It's always one of uh, demand and supply. So there could be a very small percentage of uh, a segment of population passing out from certain premier institutions where they command uh, uh, certain, certain salary levels for entry and hiring, etc. But other than that, I think it depends on organization to organization. And several organizations, what I understand is, uh, several organizations have not changed their entry level compensation over the last three, four, five years. We have not changed. My also, organization has not changed. So we have also not changed. And I, I, mean, I heard from several of my IT colleagues, yeah. they have also not changed. So I think, I think the days are changing. It's nothing to do with the entry level compensation, but I think they, they are very mature enough, these young gen and millennials. How many of you are here? <laughs> the young gen and millennials, they look far beyond entry level compensation. I think they look for a brand and they look for some experience, which is what I keep hearing. I don't know how much they mean it. I mean, I have no other way of reading their minds, but I mean, several of them have learned to talk this language of uh, looking for brand, looking for experience, looking for <coughs> not to mean anything, any, any disrespect or harm to uh, Ganesh, core industry, you know, somebody comes and talks to me. They want to say, they, I want technology to TCS and get in. So people know how to talk to whom. I think they, uh, they're fairly aware. I have one more question because I'm asking, I think Ganesh, you can answer this. How to create a culture of continuous learning and innovation? Uh, what practices and tools will, uh, will support learning? Uh, one thing is, see, you know, we have personally learned from TCS quite a bit. I think uh, we've engaged with their CTO in a different capacity, Anand Krishnan, and yeah. learned a lot about InnoVista and uh, yeah how they have gone about establishing a collaborative platform within the organization and uh, when we launched our own journey we took TCS also as an example because of some connections and uh, picked up uh, um, a lot of it. But at the, at the end of the day, uh, continuous learning or innovation, it's a management philosophy for different organizations. I don't think today you have a choice not to be innovative. So several people have uh, learned it. In a way, I think perhaps it's even overused. It's become a buzzword in every conference and every conclave. There is one piece on innovation. But suddenly, I think uh, a collaborative platform, whether it is IT-based or non-IT-based, will go a long way in uh, supporting this. You want to yeah. add on No, that? I think you had heard that. Um, see, there are going to be three IEs which is going to define the world, whether we like it or not. One is innovation. Second is internationalization. Third is inclusiveness. I mean, whether we like it or not, these are all going to, uh, today we learn that most of the um, pulses we bring in come from China and then um, toys are coming from China. Impa impact of overseas universities in India, <clears throat> SARS in Indonesia has an impact in Pune for me here. So inter innovation, Nokia, you know what has happened. Nobody ever thought there's going to be something called a touch phone or something was going to come. So innovation, internationalization, and inclusiveness is going to be the way of life. So I think it's a great point you made, Venkat. That's what it's going to be. And from a training perspective, if you have to survive, you have to continuously learn. You are not learning just because you want the organization to give you money. You want to be in this industry. I, I think now, it, it's not that manufacturing is outdated. I just want to make it very clear. They have moved on much, much more with the usage of technology. In any jo job, you want to be there. Unless you constantly update, you can become redundant pretty fast. So learning is going to become a way of life. And organizations can facilitate this through various ways. One is, of course, uh, sending you to training programs, but generally over a period of time, the joke is training programs are being sent for people because they want to get away from bosses. But I feel most of your bosses here, so either you want to get on from a team or whatever it is. But the fact of the matter is there is tremendous inputs that is being given through technology, <clears throat> through open source. I think there's too much of knowledge all out. It's for people to go and then get it. As somebody said in the Upanishad, uh, let the best knowledge come through from all doors. I think that's what we need to keep it keep it in mind to do that. Actually. So one more question here. Your inputs are from the best institutions. Any inputs for those who cannot afford this? Yeah. Vijay or something. Vijay. 
most Without most of these institutions were not known institutions 20 30 years back you there's no shortcuts for this you have to go through the agony of the long distance run up it's always lonely sometimes and if you have to look at shortcuts then of course you have to pay the compensation game to at least initially attract people and that's how many organizations do it you always have this challenge of flipkart versus devong each one keeps poaching from the other and maybe the industry is going to collapse or going to be the people. So I know, I saw the question, you said you are talking about larger organizations. Probably in 1968, TCS would have faced the same problem because nobody knew what IT is all about. <clears throat> so people asked, Mr. Kohli, when you went and first got the project, are you come to sell software or netfire from Tripur? So in 1968, we faced the same problem and that's what is going to happen to many people. Okay. Good one on long distance running. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Which one is it that you follow? And do you, in your past experience of so many years in the field of HR, do you think that this latter is possible? If so, how? I'm just trying to re reboot my RAM because the question has been pretty long, so let me just uh, <laughs> do something on that. Um, one is, there's a quote which says you can't take the horse to the trough, you can't drink it, make water, but I think the new management says you can still do both, but you cannot make it like what it is being done. That's a particular challenge we are going to do with many times the supervisors because he says, hey, my job is to code and deliver projects. But I want to let you know, if all many of us HR think in organizations we are doing HR, I think we are like an ostrich. It is ultimately the line manager who, the first level supervisor who still manages workers or associates or employees, whether in factory or in IT. I mean, it's important. I also belong to the HR fraternity. I need my job and all of us need our jobs, but it is important to know that. So don't, let's not start with the premise, supervisors don't want to do it. Supervisors want, they want continuity, they want consistency. <clears throat> so it is very important so long as HR plays its part and says, hey, you know what, I'm getting you the best guy, he or she is very good, he or she will contribute to your project. If they see value, they will respect you, they will do this. And I don't think we need to tell them, they will tell you so long as we can provide the value. That's my response. I hope I've answered the three questions. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we are running short of time. A big round of applause for uh, Mr. Venkat Narayanan and Ganeshan. May I request Mr. Manikam from Indian Oil Corporation to please uh, present mementos on behalf of MMA to the dignitaries on the dais. To Mr. Venkat Narayanan, President HR Arane Group. Thank you, sir, for having accepted our invitation to be present here. And to Mr. K. Ganeshan, 